Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge. This is Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio, and it's a Monday video. Uh, we are painting bases. Uh, we're going to put two old videos together into one video, uh, as well as teach you how to paint these tiles, because we've just released these on eBay, and already we're getting like questions on how did we paint the tiles. So we're going to be painting these. As you can see, they're all resin cast bases. At the end of this video, I will throw up some photos of what we've got. Um, on our eBay store and the links will be in the description below if you want to get hold of some of these for yourself Now we've started off with a uh, Vallejo black primer and I'm going to start using Rhinox Hide by Games Workshop through the airbrush uh, This is to give the stone a little bit of a, a ready warmth to it What I didn't count on by the time I'd finished this video is surprisingly you can use this same stone technique whether you're doing lava or the toxic goo sort of color scheme um, it works really well for both, um, which I was quite surprised with. This is quite a generous um, airbrush, we're just going to cover most of it. Um, barely any of the black showing on the underneath. Next we're going to go over that with a Dumbolt Brown, which is even more red, um, because we're going to start these ones with the lava effect first. Now, if you are just doing this with a paintbrush, guys, you're going to want to start with Dumbot Brown and start overbrushing the next colour on in a sec. So if you haven't got an airbrush, you can still do this. Uh, it's not a drama. It just It's just going to take you a little bit longer. Next is Morning Fang Brown. So like I was saying, if you've got only a... Uh, paintbrush available to you, just start with the Doombolt Brown as your base and then your Morning Fang Brown, maybe throw in a watered down uh, null oil wash to leave those darker recesses in there. At this point I'm just spraying this uh, from the top angle, pretty much about 45 degree and I'm leaving some of the darker areas, just leaving them dark. Now, back to being a uh, peasant, I'm going to use a dry brush. Um, simple stuff, this is a games workshop, large dry brush I think. You want to make sure you've took off nearly all of the paint there. And this is just your general normal dry brush, back and forth, um, but later on we'll change the dry brush technique to get different effects. And as you can see, it's already going to start bringing all those colours together, and what happens is all these browns on the underneath start to give the look like... <laughs> There's a different transition on the underneath, and uh, these are just the highlighted edges. Um, it works really, really well for this. Now I'm going to start painting the tiles, and for this I'm just going to use Steel Legion Drab. It doesn't matter if you get your Steel Legion Drab in between the tiles, because we're going to put on a few washers, so there's plenty of opportunity right there to uh, fill in those um, hard lines where the uh, recesses are with the washers, and it doesn't really matter. But I will say that uh, this variety of bases that we've got, it is easy to miss one or two uh, because of the design. So keep your eye out. Even I missed a few and I'm the one who designed them. So easy enough to do. But you can always go back in with the Steel Legion Drab and paint them later on. Next, it's Agrax Shade and it's mixed 50-50 with water. Try not to uh, put too much colour back into this. Um, if it starts pooling up, use your brush to take that away and then spread it everywhere else. We're going to cover the bases as well as the rest of the rock around the edges. That's going to enrich all those browns that we've previously had on there. And that's going to give a much higher contrast to those greys. Now we're going back in with a Rakarth Flesh. This time I'm not going back and forth, back and forth. As you might be able to tell there, I'm going around anti-clockwise. And then I'm going to go around clockwise. This is a trick we learnt from a, a Games Workshop painter um, at Games Day. And to be honest, ever since I've learnt this, I thought it was a great technique for dry brushing. You don't have to use a dry brush like this. If you've got one of those round edged makeup brushes, they're really perfect for it because the bristles are so soft and uh, they'd just be really good at that. And you can, as you can see, yeah, it's going to stain the tiles a little bit, but we're going to do so much more to this that. Um, it's just going to build up those layers and make them look worn and like people have been walking on them. Next is a uh, Null Oil Wash. Uh, again, 50-50. And that's going over all the tiles as well as the rocks. That's 50-50 with water, sorry. You want to keep this pretty thin because it's going to be quite a strong um, colour in comparison to all the browns that we've got. 
I was trying to come up with the quickest way to uh, paint all these so this is why I've got a very simple wash dry brush technique for this one now we're going to use sky grey by model colour and that's going to be um, anti-clockwise and clockwise circle motions over the top just make sure you've took off most of that paint if you want to you can focus um, on the stone areas a little bit more around the tops and go for a bit of a stronger highlight because we're going to put another wash on in a sec as you can see that's been really simple so far then a about 60 percent 70 percent water null oil wash just to get back in over there what you will find with this is because it's a dry brush there's a lot of dry pigment on there when you put the washers on they tend to run into the recesses anything that isn't bonded down so maybe put a varnish on um, about halfway through after your first Rakarth flesh dry brush no your second Rakarth flesh dry brush just to stop your Rakarth flesh and everything else you know sinking into those uh, corners and being awkward and after that there is only screaming skull left I believe and this is going to be used to uh, pick out those edges and you, as you can see I'm doing more of a back and forth this time and a bit of the anti uh, anti clockwise and clockwise movements just it's just there to catch the very tips of all those tiles as well as the tops of those surfaces and because it's a screaming skull dry brush it's going to really add a little bit of extra colour to those tiles that it needs and it also will blend really nicely with the sky grey that's underneath barely showing up so it's basically a dry brushing most of the tiles there right onto the lava I'm flying through these today so we're starting with a um, German Red Primer by Vallejo now you have seen me do these on previous videos we're hoping this video does a bit better and uh, we can point people who purchase our bases and ask how we painted them in this direction we're also going to do the um, toxic goo ones as well in the same video here. Next is Games Workshop's Mephiston Red and we're just going to be aiming that in the centre of all the lava areas. Um, not just on the um, bubbles there but uh, around the areas of the bubbles. Every time I do this I always make the warm area a little bit too small which uh, you think I'll learn after doing so many. But spreading that second colour out is uh, really going to help the effect later on. Next is Bloody Red by Game Colour. Which is uh, only a slight transition up really from the uh, Mephiston Red. Also comes out a little bit, um, a little bit glossy. Uh, I guess that kind of helps the lava effect. Not as much as it does with the um, Toxic Goo sort of effect making things look sticky. Now we're aiming more towards the uh, middles of the hot spots around the bubbles and you know around the base of the bubbles. Next is Hot Orange by Game Colour. And as you can see the area that we're working with here is going to be getting smaller and smaller. Um, that's why it's such a good idea to spread out your Mephiston Red uh, to begin with. As you can see they're starting to transition to a nice warm orange in patches. It's having a bit of an airbrush day when I did this one, it just wasn't behaving itself. After that we have Troll Slayer Orange by Games Workshop and uh, these bits of footage get shorter and shorter as I'm only doing the uh, tops at this point. You can pretty much spray directly from the top and that's going to add a warm area around the bubble as well. So it looks like there's a bit of shade and it looks like the bubble is actually rising out of the lava. I will show some photos of the rest of the bases that we've got at the end I think. And they all go simultaneously, well they all go together uh, really really well, that's why the, um, there's so many tiles in our range now. Fire Dragon Bright is the next colour, and as you can see we're getting some lava sort of effect. Just sticking to the very tops this time, trying not to get too much overspray. All of our bases have been designed so that you don't have to have the same um, display model base over and over again so you got 10 terminators you don't want two packs of the same base but we've got stuff that's very different now next is model color ivory just to lighten up the very top um, even more and uh, I made a bit of a mistake there with my airbrush spatter so I had to clean that out with a brush and after that we're going to use flat yellow by game color which doesn't really show up as much as I would have liked it to um, at least on camera anyway uh, it's because of the exposure from my lights so 
can either have the image too dark or too bright and not pick up the uh, really bright colours that I'm using. Right, onto the greens, and all I've done here is uh, I got Andy to spray some black prime back in there, and we're using the same base. And we're going to use Heavy Black Green by Game Color. You could do anything you wanted with these, you could make it look like oil if you wanted to, using glosses and greys and blacks, and maybe put some splashes of colour in there. We'll be expanding these sets even further as well, I've got a whole bunch of designs, so they're interchangeable. Um, which was the whole premise of building this style of bases. We're now using Games Workshop's Warpstone Glow, which is a very subtle transition, so you want to do this, um, go over with this one two or three times and let it dry. If you're using an airbrush, what I did notice is um, because the bubbles are completely round, the paint does run off ever so slightly and can occasionally cause a, a little rim around the outside where paint starts collecting up, um, which isn't a good look, so best to do it in several sittings. A scorpion of green by model colour is then used pretty much in the exact same fashion when we're using everything else to warm up those dark areas and uh, really add some colour to everything. After that I'm just going to use pure white by model colour for the tops. See the, the, the uh, toxic goo one doesn't take as many paints for the transition as the uh, red, one, red one does just because it's easier to uh, make a green transition, you just make it go from green to yellow and that will give it the, uh, the goo sort of horrible toxic waste sort of look. Similar to how you do OSL on Necrons really. After that it's Lamentous Yellow which is a games work workshop glaze or wash really watered down and uh, any of that white that was on there is now gonna slowly start being brought up to yellow giving us a lovely subtle transition. And after you finish doing that colour, you're pretty much done. You just need to do your black edges around the outside and uh, you're finished. So, I hope you, ha I hope you like that, guys. Um, and if you've watched this far, uh, thank you very much. Now I'm going to start throwing up some images here of um, the bases that are available right now on our eBay store. And we plan on expanding this. So all of these... As you can see, um, easily interchangeable in your army. So you don't. If you've got loads of 32 millimeter style troops and they're all on the same base, you can switch these up, get two or three packs, mix and match them, and your army will still look uniform. I'm going to give out some special thank yous now uh, to Joe Spearpoint, Rob Pates Models, Warren Brunstad, Ludwig Hofbauer, and the Orc Boys. You guys are our patrons. You are awesome. You help support this channel. Uh, if you want to be a patron, all of our links for our social media are in the description. And a special thank you to The Outpost in Sheffield, affiliate link in the description. They sell um, brand new models at a second hand price, all the hobby supplies you want. And um, every time you follow that link and purchase something, we get store credit to buy more models to um, buy more stuff for the channel. And that's all for me today guys, thanks very much for watching, uh, do like, share, comment and if you haven't already hit subscribe, we'll catch you in the next one.